Now, when you first open Blender, you're gonna see the UI looks something like this. Now, this is a very clunky UI, very boring, very intimidating in my opinion. We're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up before we proceed with anything else. So the first thing I wanna do is get rid of this timeline down here. So if you hover over a corner, either the left or the right, you can actually get rid of this by clicking, dragging, and releasing. That's gonna be a way now. What we also wanna do is get rid of this camera and the light, we don't need them right now. So I'm gonna select the camera, press the delete key on the keyboard. Same with the light, press the delete key on the keyboard as well. And you're also gonna see we have some little gizmos over here. These basically allow you to kind of move around and I think it's a waste because we're gonna be using hotkeys for these operations instead. And I'll show you how to do those shortly. But for right now, let's get rid of these just to make the UI a bit cleaner. We're gonna to go to Edit, Preferences, and under Interface, we're gonna go here to Navigation Controls, turn those off. While we're at it, let's also change the resolution scale to 1.2, so it's a little bit easier to look at. Then we're gonna to go to Viewport, go to 3D Viewport Axis, and change this to Simple Axis, and then we should have something a little bit easier to look at. Next, if we press the T key, we can get rid of this menu over here. We're going to be using hotkeys instead of this menu, so we can just press the T key to get rid of that. Also, I don't really need this information over here, so I'm going to go to the overlays panel, go to text info, and just turn that off. Now, as you can see, we have a much cleaner UI. It's a lot easier to look at, a lot easier on the eyes. Next, I wanna show you how to move things around the scene, how to rotate things, and how to scale things. Now, this is very easy to remember. S is for scale, R is for rotate, and G is for grab. It's the easiest thing to remember. Now, if you select the cube here and press the G key, you can grab the object and move it around with your mouse. Now, sometimes you wanna constrain this to a particular axis. Now, just in case you didn't know, the red line is the x-axis, you can also see that up here. The green line is the y-axis, and the blue line, which you can't see, is the z-axis. If you want to turn that on, you can do so right here. However, I like to keep this turned off. So if we press the G key and press Y, we can grab this along the y-axis. We can press X to move it along the X, and we can press Z to move it along the Z. Now, if we want to scale this along a certain axis, we do the same exact thing. We press S to scale, and then X, Y, or Z. Very simple. And then to rotate, think of rotation as if you had a log going straight through your core, and you wanted to rotate around that log itself. Think of it the same way. If we want to rotate in this direction, like so, we need to rotate around the Y axis. So if we press R, and then Y, we can rotate in this direction, as you can see. And also, if you ever want to cancel an operation, you can just press right click. So again, you can rotate around the Y, the X, or the Z axis. Very, very simple to do, and just very basic operations. Sometimes the cube is a little bit strange to look at. I think it's boring. So what I like to do personally is go up here to this panel. I like to go to Cavity, change this setting to both and what you're going to see is the cube just a little bit more highlighted and you can also change some of the settings in here i like to set mine to 1.7 1.7 and 0 0.7 0 0.7 i think this makes the cube look a lot easier to look at next we need to learn how to move around the scene you've probably seen me do this a little bit in the tutorial already First of all, we have the pivot option, which is where we hold the middle mouse button. We can pivot around the cube here. We can also hold the shift key and press middle mouse button to pan around the scene. And we can also scroll in or out to zoom in and to zoom out. So I would spend five to 10 minutes just getting used to these hotkeys. They're a little bit strange at first, but once the muscle memory kicks in, this is very, very easy to use and you'll be able to do this stuff very quickly like you can see me doing now. I've just been doing this for years, it's very easy. So again, shift, middle mouse button to pen, 
middle mouse button, zoom in, zoom out, and you can click the middle mouse button to kind of pivot around this way. And you can do all three operations at once or, you know, kind of stack together just to make a little bit more, you know, muscle memory kind of uh, embedded in your brain. It's going to be a lot easier once you just do this a few times. Next, we have object and edit mode. Now, the default mode we have here is called object mode. Now, to change into edit mode, we can press the tab key on the keyboard. Now, the difference between object and edit mode is that in edit mode, we can change individual elements of our objects, such as vertices, we can select edges, and we can also select faces here in edit mode. In object mode, we're basically just adjusting the object here as a whole. So if we tab into edit mode here, you're gonna see we have vertices, we have edges, and we have faces. And to select each of those settings, you can press one, two, or three on the keyboard. So for example, what I could do is press two to go into edge mode. I could select an edge right here, and then I could just use the basic operations like G for grab, and I could grab this on the X. You know, I could grab it on the Z, you get the idea. I could also select a face, for example, do the same thing. I could grab the face on the X or the Y or the Z. I could also do rotations. For example, I could rotate this on the X or rotate this on the Z, kind of spinning it, rotate it on the you know, Y, it doesn't really matter. You get the idea. And you can also select vertices here, but I wouldn't recommend moving just single vertices like this. It's gonna cause issues. Next, we might wanna perform some basic operations here just to make a very basic shape. So the first operation you're gonna be using a lot is something called extrude. If you select the face here and then select a face, you can press the E key to extrude. This is going to extrude a separate section of the object. If you press a right click like I just did right there, let me show you. If you extrude and then right click, that'll actually cancel the operation. However, what you're gonna notice is we actually still have that duplicate face here on the top because if I grab it, you're gonna see we actually have that separate section with that uh, little edge going around there. So as you can see, this is without the extrusion and this is you know with the extrusion and if I were to cancel it, we kind of have like a duplicate section. So just be careful of that. So I can press E to extrude and just make a bunch of different you know, changes kind of like this, which is pretty cool, very simple stuff. Now let's say I wanted to extrude a certain section. Let's say I wanted to extrude just the top portion here of this face. I can't just really select that. What I need to do is add in something called a loop cut. To do that, I'm gonna press Control R on the keyboard I'm gonna click and then drag this loop up this way. And now if I go into face mode, I can actually select this separate section here and just keep you know, making my adjustments to this object. I'm gonna go ahead and tab into object mode. And as you can see, in object mode, all I can really do is adjust the entire thing as a whole. Whereas in edit mode, I can actually you know, make adjustments on specific areas only. So that's the main difference. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this object here and then go up here to add, mesh, and add in a new cube so we can start from scratch. Let's tab back into edit mode. What I wanna do here is introduce you to bevels. Now, in hard surface modeling, we use bevels a ton. They are incredibly useful. So to add in a bevel, what we can actually do is go here to edge mode, select the specific edge we want to bevel. We press Control B and we can do it like that. And if you wanna add more segments, make it rounder, you can scroll up on the mouse wheel. The more segments you add, the more round it is, as you can see. And you can scroll down to make this you know, a one segment. We actually call this a chamfer, just a one segment bevel. So as you can see, you can start stacking operations here. You can maybe make a bevel, and then maybe what you could do is you could add in a loop cut, and then perhaps extrude this area over here and then maybe scale this on the X to make a shape like that. You kind of get the idea. You can make some pretty cool shapes very quickly once you get used to these different operations. Another tool we have here is called Inset. So if I go to face mode and select this face right here, I can press I to inset. And as you can see, 
Now we have access to just this inset portion here. I have all these different faces here I can use. So I could select this face, extrude it. I could inset again, extrude it. I could, you know, inset again, extrude it. You can make some pretty cool shapes pretty quickly. So even if you're a beginner, you can kind of get the hang of this stuff pretty quickly. Now what I want to do is add in a cylinder. I want to show you something interesting. So we're going to add in a cylinder and you're going to see this cylinder kind of has all these lines going on down here. And that's because if we go into edit mode, each of these are basically a face that make up the entire cylinder. Now, if you want to shade this smooth, what you can do is right click and then choose shade smooth. Now you're going to see when you do this, we get very strange problems. That's because we shaded smooth the entire thing. Instead, what we want to do is shade smooth individual elements of this object. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. Instead, what we're going to do is right click and choose Shade Smooth by Angle. This is the one I use 99% of the time because it just works for hard surface modeling. So we're going to select Shade Smooth by Angle and you're going to see it shaded that smooth very nicely and it looks good. The reason we kind of still see some lines here is because we have this cavity feature turned on. If I were to turn that off, you're going to see we don't have that problem at all. So in my opinion, I would just ignore it completely. It's not a big deal. Another option if you don't like that is you can actually add in a cylinder with more segments. So you could go here to add cylinder, click this button, change the vertices to something higher like 64. And now when you shade smooth by angle, you can't really see it anymore. Another thing you're going to be doing quite frequently is duplicating your objects. So if you select an object here and press Shift D, this will duplicate the object. And you can do the same operation as before. You can press Shift D and then just move this on the X or the Y or the Z. It doesn't really matter. You get the idea. So you can stack all these different operations together to make your workflow even more efficient. It's not like you have to duplicate and then you have to you know, cancel it and then move it. You can do all of these, you know, consecutively. Next, I want to show you how to join objects together. Now, I'm not going to get into explanations as to when you would or wouldn't use this. That'll just come with context as you get better and better at Blender. But I do want to show you how to do it. If you have two separate objects, what you can actually do is shift click to select both of them, press Control J, and now they're going to be one single entity. So if I tab into edit mode, now we have two edit modes available. Let's say we want to separate these again. We can select everything with the A key, press P, selection, and now if we just press the tab key back into object mode, you're going to see we should have two separate objects. If you don't, just try it again, P to separate by selection. And if that's still not working, what you might need to do is go to buy loose parts and that should work just fine. Another thing I want to mention is that if you duplicate an object in edit mode, it's automatically going to be one single entity. So if I were to duplicate this in edit mode instead of object mode, you're going to see by default it's one single object. That's because edit mode is basically the data layer. Whenever we duplicate things in that same data layer, it's uh, is basically just going to be joined together like this. So just keep that in mind because sometimes this can happen. But again, you can press P and separate by loose parts if you need to do that. Now I want to show you how to select different objects. So to select everything in the scene, you can press the A key to select and deselect. So A and then you can double tap A to deselect. A, double tap A. Now if you want to select multiple objects, you can hold the shift key and that's going to select multiple objects. Same with an edit mode. You can select multiple faces by holding shift. And if you want to select a strip, for example, you can hold control instead of having to shift click all of these one by one by one. You can just hold control. Now be careful because if you were to control click over here, it's basically going to use a shortest path algorithm to choose which areas to select. So if you know you select too far away, it might select around a different way, but you kind of get the idea. So if you hold control, that's going to select different strips and just make it a lot more efficient. You can also hold alt in face mode to select a consecutive strip all the way around, which is pretty cool. 
Now keep in mind when you do this, you wanna make sure if you wanna choose a certain direction, let me show you what I mean. Let's, um, let's use an object like this for example. If I go into face mode and I hold the Alt key, you're gonna see nothing actually happens. So in some cases, if you wanna tell Blender which strip to select around, you need to hold the Alt button right on the edge so that way it knows, okay, we're gonna start based on these two connection points. You can hold Alt and just select that entire strip all the way around. Again, you can select these manually with Shift or hold Control to do that, but there's just another way of selecting. Another tool we have is the Circle Select tool. If I press the C key, I can actually select based on you know a circle. You can kind of see the circle and I can zoom in or zoom out to make it larger. So for example, if I make this a lot bigger, it would basically select the whole thing. We also have box select, which is the B key, where I can press B and then box select that area. Now you might think this is gonna select all the way around, but it's actually not because we can't see the backside. So if you wanted to select all the way around, what you could do is press the Z key to go into wireframe mode and then box select those faces there. You can see those little dots that represents the center of the face basically. We can box select those, and then if we just press Z and go back into solid view, you're gonna see we've selected all the way around. Next up, we have different viewport positions. Now, before I show you how to do this, I want you to go up here to Edit, Preferences, and under Interface, I want you to turn on the feature for automatic perspective. Now, if you don't see it on this menu, it might actually be under Navigation. And what you wanna do here is go to auto, go to perspective, turn that on. What that is gonna do is automatically place you in orthographic mode. Let me show you. If this is turned off and I try to go into side view, and to go into side view, you press the tilde key on the keyboard. We're gonna go into right view. You're gonna see we're still in 3D mode, basically. I wanna go into two-dimensional mode. So what you wanna do is make sure you actually have this feature turned on so now, when you press the tilde key and go into right mode, you're gonna be in a two-dimensional view. This is a lot easier to work with. So you can go into right view, you can go into left view, top view, bottom view, and let's just make this a bit easier to look at. We'll go here and just bevel this maybe. And now you're gonna see when I go into the different sides, you can kind of see this is the chamfer from the side, but from the front, for example, looks a little bit different. From the back, it also looks different. So you can see how these different views can be useful, especially when you're trying to work. And we use this a lot, especially in hard surface modeling. So that's all you really need for the basics of Blender. Now, obviously there is a lot more to learn, but I just wanna start with the basics here. So you can hop right into Blender, get used to everything, and then move on to the more advanced stuff. Now you might be wondering, how long does it take to really get good at 3D modeling in Blender? What I'll say is for hard surface modeling specifically, if you're just going at it with pure YouTube resources and not investing a ton of time, it's probably gonna take you a couple years. I'm just gonna be honest with you. That's because YouTube tutorials do not have any sort of optimized system that you can just plug into and get the results very quickly. However, we do have a program, if you're interested, called the Hard Surface Academy. This is our fundamental 3D modeling workflow where we take you from a complete beginner that has never touched Blender before to basically just a seasoned hard surface artist making stuff like this and our students are getting these results usually within two to four weeks. That's because the system is heavily optimized. We've refined it over the past four years. We only give you the information you need, cut out the rest, so that way you can learn this stuff very, very quickly. So if you just wanna save time and get the information just handed to you on a silver platter so that way you're not wasting any time at all, definitely check out our Hard Surface Academy program in the description below for more information. So those are the basics of Blender. Hopefully that was useful and you can start using these in your workflow starting today. I'll see you in the next video.